Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. And yes, I'm still in this room, which is actually the gym room where I do my keep fit, because it's just raining and pouring and you wouldn't be able to hear me over the rain in the other room. Sorry about that. Okay, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm taking you back to 1603. For on this day in history, late on the 26th of March, 1603, two days after the death of Queen Elizabeth I, Sir Robert Carey arrived at Holyrood in Edinburgh, Scotland, to inform King James VI that England's queen was dead and that James was now king. James was the son of the late Mary Queen of Scots and the great-great-grandson of King Henry VII. Carey, youngest son of Henry Carey, Lord Hunsdon, who was the Queen's cousin, had prepared for this mission. As Elizabeth lay dying, he arranged for fast horses to be prepared at intervals between Richmond Palace and Edinburgh. And on the night of the 23rd and 24th of March, as the Queen's condition worsened, he left word with a man in the coffrer's chamber to call him if it was thought that the Queen would die. And he also gave the porter an angel, a type of coin, to let him in at any time so that he could ride off as soon as possible. As he explains in his memoirs, Carey's livelihood depended on the Queen and he was worried that he'd be left in what he described as a wretched state. He therefore wanted to make sure that he got into the new monarch's good books as soon as possible. Carey had already written to the king of Elizabeth's condition and had assured him that he'd be the first man that should bring him news of her death. Carey wasn't able to leave straight after hearing news of Elizabeth's death in the early hours of the 24th as he was told to await orders from the council but he did manage to get out of Richmond, thanks to his brother George's intervention with the porter, and waited at Charing Cross for further news from the council. Between nine and 10 o'clock on the morning of the 24th of March, he was finally given leave to begin his ride north. He spent that night at Doncaster, and then the night of the 25th at his property at Widrington in Northumberland. Poor Carey must have been a wreck after riding so far in just two days. I looked it up and it's around 330 miles as the crow flies between London and Edinburgh. And I can't quite imagine doing that on horseback. And Carey had a nasty fall too. In his memoirs, he wrote of how he would have been with the king at supper time if it hadn't been for a great fall by the way. He describes how his horse with one of his heels gave me a great blow on the head that made me shed much blood. As a result of his injury, he was forced to ride a soft pace after and so arrived much later than planned, just after King James had gone to bed. When Carey arrived at Holyrood late on the 26th of March, James was in bed, but Carey was escorted to the King's chamber where he knelt by him and, in Carey's own words, saluted him by his title of England, Scotland, France and Ireland. Carey also recorded that he gave the king a blue ring from a fair lady that he hoped would give the king reassurance that he was speaking the truth. The king looked at the ring and said, It is enough. I know by this you are a true messenger. This sapphire ring had been sent to Carey's sister, Philadelphia, Lady Scroop, one of the Queen's ladies, by King James, with instructions to return it to him as a sign that the Queen was really dead. After the King had heard Carey's news, he ordered his physicians to attend the injured Carey, and then said these reassuring words to him. I know you have lost a near kinswoman and a loving mistress, but take here my hand, I will be as good a master to you and will requite this service with honour and reward. So Carey's mission had paid off. King James I left Edinburgh on the 4th of April and arrived in London on the 7th of May. James had appointed Carey as one of his gentlemen of the bedchamber, but Carey ended up being dismissed after the King's arrival in London and was demoted to the position of gentleman of the privy chamber instead. 
However, Carey did go on to govern the household of the king's son, Prince Charles, the future Charles I, and he had a decent career under James and Charles, becoming Earl of Monmouth in 1626. A hard journey and a nasty accident seem to have been worth it. I'll give you a link to read Robert Carey's memoirs uh, because they do make fascinating reading. I really, really enjoyed researching them. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 26th of March 1609, John Dee, astrologer, mathematician, alchemist, spy, philosopher, geographer and advisor to Elizabeth I, a, a complete genius really, he died. And you can find out more about this fascinating man in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, give me a like and leave me a comment. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.